My name is Roy Oliver, and I'm in a family of Frankfurt lumberjacks. I have many stories, and I can recall a few. About once a week, they'd have a boom ready. They had a maid there. They had a smaller steam tug and about 40 men there on the island. Nobody living on the island. I think they had just logged the island off that time. Took everything that was good. Then was all cut in the winter time, and they was blanked, you know, brought and banked to the lake shore. Then in the summer, they rolled them in and rafted them. Now they'd done that along Lake Michigan here. They banked some logs north of Point Betsy. They had some there. They used to have a digging ground down that they had banked a good many feet of log. It was different there. They'd tug them out of there with a boom and they'd roll them logs into the lake. What I say a boom is a bunch of boom sticks around them. Uh, they'd roll them in there and fasten a boom and she'd bring them on he in here to the Frankfurt to the piers. They'd have a heck of a time on the piers because they'd have a man on each side, you know. Uh, it was too wide and it would just fill the pier. I worked in Bailey's camp and Lum and Gorman down here in Frankfurt. Old Lum Gorman was the foreman. Uh, there was good food. Uh, Loom Gorman's wife was cook and she had an assistant. Uh, the sleeping quarters was bunks. Uh, you'd have to ha lay hay or straw, uh, put into your ticks and your blankets, and that was it. Uh, sleeping quarters, uh, one on top of the other, and two or three high. Everybody knew his job, and there wasn't much to it. If you couldn't do it, you was let go, that's all. But they didn't crowd you. Everyone kept going, like cutting logs. There'd be two in a gang, log cutters, we'd cut logs. Cutting hardwood logs, we'd average about 50 to 60 logs a day. Of course, there was pretty big stuff, and others averaged about the same. We'd bunch logs up. You'd have a 12-foot wheel. Well, we'd load these logs. Say we'd put three on the bottom, and, or two on the bottom, and one on the top. Uh, they was big, and that was it. Then the chain went around under them and put them on a skid. Then they pulled these wheels over them and pulled back the tongue way back. The tongue on the axle and the axle was square. Put way back and you'd hook the chain, then you'd pull the tongue forward, it raised these logs up. Then you hook the front chain on it so it held them right there. You generally leave the back end of the logs drag a little but not too much. Where it was downhill, there were no brakes on them wheels so we put on what was called a trailer. A, law, a small log behind a drag about the right size to hold this thing back. Uh, if we didn't, it might have been dangerous. The team was hooked to the end of the tongue and there was an iron bar on the end of the tongue about 18 inches long. The teamster hung onto what was with one hand uh, when he was walking along and drove his team. He had to have a team that would mind. He drove the team with one hand because if they hit a stump, it would give him an awful jerk. They kept the stump out of where the tracks were, but once in a while they might hit one and the driver would knock out. Some places in the North Country they'd get lice. Where I worked, like Loom Gorman, uh, they was kept clean. The lumbermen generally, they'd done their washing and took their baths on Sunday. That was the day and then generally made a chair in there and they cut their own hair. There was some good barbers, you know. Then it was their Sunday and the way they enjoyed themselves. Of course, they played cards in the evening, not for big money, but just played cards. But once in a while, like at Butler Shingle Mill, uh, a boulder saw broke. A big saw, they cut these bolts 15 or 16 inches long that went into the shingle machine. Uh, that saw broke and it cut one fellow right in two. I remember seeing his cap in the mill afterwards. It was quick. A.G. Butler was the man who started the mill, but I never remembered him. But D.B. Butler was the guy that was running it when I was a kid. I worked there when I was 16. 
I drove a dump cart. When I was handling lumber or wood, they had this leather apron that hung around their necks and down in front. It was leather and some of them had heavy leather gloves or mitts. Because this lumber wasn't planed, it was rough all of it. There wasn't hardly ever any plain lumber. The same way they cored wood, it was kind of rough, so they had these leather aprons. The lumberjacks were in the woods in the winter. There was a lot of them called river drivers. They'd run the river in the spring. They used to call them river hogs too. Well, they'd start them booms up by the Manistee River and the Betsy River. They'd start way up near Lake Ann. They'd start in the spring and there'd be quite a lot of snow yet. The thaw was coming. They'd build a house on those log rafts and about 20 men lived and came down with the logs. When they got down to the mill, they tore the house off and used the logs. Millions of feet of logs in the river. They'd have to watch all these bends and all these places where the logs could get stuck and begin to form a jam. They had to watch that awful close, and them followers were in the water. Sometimes them drives would last all summer. There'd be different drives start, and they'd back up in the river and start some more. They'd try to bank the logs and get the drive done before September. Butler's old mill burned, and they brought one from Watervale and moved it up here. They run that one. I worked there as a kid, too. In 1908, though, that one burned too. The lumber days were about over, and slowly most of the mills burned. Mm -hmm.